This has got to be one of the most requested TV comparisons that we've ever had. The 48-inch LG C3 versus the 48-inch Sony A90K. But which one will come out on top? Let's put them head to head and find out. Hey guys, Louis here from Smart Home Sounds and wow, am I excited for this comparison. We've got two very popular models from two big TV manufacturers and both coming in currently around about that £1,500 price point for the 48 inch version. Now a small disclaimer as always that pricing may be different depending on when you're watching this video. So please make sure you check the links in the description below for the latest pricing. Now in order to find out which is the best option for you out of these two TVs, I'll be looking at five key categories. So first of all, number one, design. So how will this look in your space? Space. Number two, picture quality. What sort of visuals are we getting with these TVs? Number three, the sound quality. So how do we feel about the audio performance of these TVs? Number four, gaming capabilities. So both being 48 inch models, these would make great gaming monitors, but what are they actually like when it comes to game time? And finally, number five, sharing my overall experience with you guys. So what are these TVs like to live with day to day? So hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have a much better idea of which model is best suited for you. Now, if one of these TVs does catch your eye and you want to support us, then head to smarthomesounds.co.uk. And if you find this video helps in any way, then go on and give us a subscribe. We're getting ever closer to that 100K milestone and we would love to have you all on board. Okay, a few need to knows to start us off then. So the Sony A90K is one of Sony's master series OLEDs from 2022, which is continuing on into 2023. Now it sits just below their flagship QD OLED, the A95L, and above their entry level OLED option, the A80L, and it's only available in 42 inch and 48 inch. Now the LG C3 is a new model for 2023, replacing the hugely popular C2 from last year. It sits in the top end of LG's OLED range, just below their flagship G3 model, and is available in a range of sizes from 42 inch all the way up to 83 inch. Now before I dive in, I do want to say that both of these models are really really great options if you're looking for a TV for regular TV viewing, movie watching and gaming. And I think that the reason that we're asked for this comparison so much is because it is a pretty close call between these two TVs. So my aim with this video will be to highlight the main strengths and the weaknesses of both models. And then it really will be over to you to decide what is most important to you when choosing a new TV. Okay, so let's kick off with design. And first things first, both the C3 and the A90K are very nice aesthetic models. And of course, you've got the option with both of them to have them stand mounted like we have here, or have them wall mounted. Now this A90K is what Sony call a one slate design, and it features a very thin metal bezel around the edge, keeping it nice and minimalistic. So this stand is slightly different to a lot of TVs that we have reviewed on our channel so far. So this aluminium center plate allows you to have the TV raised, like we've got it here currently, which would allow us to put a soundbar underneath the TV, or you can actually lower it right down so the TV sits flush with the surface. Now this TV also comes with Sony's premium backlit remote and one of their standard remotes if you're a fan of the numbered buttons. Now the C3 offers almost invisible bezels and the overall emphasis with this TV has been around the ultra slim design, similar to their G3 gallery TV. This means the TV is nice and slim and would therefore look great wall mounted. Comparatively, the A90K is a bit deeper, sitting around 5.9 centimeters deep compared with the C3's 4.6 centimeter depth. The A90K is slightly lighter than the C3 though, 13.4 kilograms compared to 14.9 kilograms without stands. If you choose to use the stands with this C3, then you've got this foot design, which is okay, but it doesn't give you the flexibility to raise it to have a soundbar placed under the TV. Now I did put a Sonos beam in front of it and that was okay, but it didn't infringe on the screen, but it is sat slightly in front of the stand. So just bear that in mind. And finally, this C3 comes with the LG Magic Remote. Now look, I've said it before on this channel, I'm not a massive fan of this particular design. And as an Apple TV user, I would rarely need to use it. But when I do need to use it, I do find the wheel and the gyroscopic motion control a bit annoying. And the design of the remote doesn't feel very premium either. But that's my personal preference. And I'm sure there are some people out there who love it. Overall, in terms of design, I think that the Sony A90K in comparison to the C3 does feel just a little bit more premium. It's more of a statement TV, and for me, I think that's mostly down to the difference in the stands. The center stand on the A90K is a really nice feature, and it looks a lot nicer than the C3 stand. But if you're wall mounting them, then I think the C3 has the edge with the slimmer design. Okay, on to the good stuff then, the picture quality. 
Now, a lot of this comes down to the processes behind these TVs, which for those not sure, is essentially the brains behind a TV and it controls what we see in here. Now, Sony are very well renowned for their advanced processing and their cognitive processor XR, which launched a few years ago back in 2021. And it does a great job in their Bravia XR TVs. Now, the theory behind this processor is that it uses cognitive intelligence to analyze the content that you're watching and then recreates it in the same way that we would see or hear it in the real world. Now, of course, that's a lovely marketing description, which means nothing if they can't back it up. But throughout our testing over the years, we have found that the processor does give an accurate picture quality that is pretty true to life. Now, the processor also gives us lots of other Sony marketing jargon, including XR Triluminous Pro, OLED Contrast Pro, and XR OLED Motion which all add to what we see. Now, as I mentioned, this is also one of Sony's master series TVs, which means it has been calibrated for an enhanced performance out of the box. So overall, some very clever tech going on with this TV. Now, the LG C3 has actually had an upgrade on the processor this year for 2023, stepping up to the A9 AI processor 4K Gen 6, rather than the Gen 5 in the C2 that we saw last year. And that's gonna push this panel even further with more advanced processing. Now, they've said in particular that a new algorithm should help to distinguish between an image's foreground and background and also increase perceived brightness in critical areas. Now previously Sony have had the edge when it comes to image processing so I'm really interested to see how much that upgraded processor helps the C3 challenge the A90K visually. It's also worth noting that neither of these TVs have a brightness boost in heatsink but both do have some very clever tech at play when it comes to image retention. Now I'm not going to get into all of it right now but for example both have something called pixel shift where the image will shift after a certain period of time. Sony's A90 90K also has a temperature sensor and temperature distribution mapping to help with the burning. And the LG C3 has something called Temporal Peak Luminance Control, or TPC, to detect static images which pose a higher risk of retention, and it can then adjust the pixel luminance to reduce that risk. So how have these performed in our testing? Well, we've tested these TVs in both our brighter showroom and our darker film studio and use a range of SDR and HDR content. And it's worth noting here that neither of these TVs support HDR 10 plus. Now, if you've watched just one of our TV reviews before, then you'll know that we don't really get into the nitty gritty of nit rates, but rather carry out a lot of real world testing across a variety of content to give you an insight into the real day to day performance of these TVs. So first of all, both the A90K and the C3 offer a variety of picture modes and calibration settings to adjust the picture to suit your personal tastes and both are fairly intuitive to use. If you caught our full review of the LG C2 last year, then you'll remember that one of our pros and also cons was the level of settings that you had for picture quality, which was great if you had a good understanding of how to calibrate a TV, but could be a little bit overwhelming for the average consumer. Well, this time round, you'll be pleased to know that they have made changes for that with this C3 and it is a a lot easier to make adjustments on this model. Now, in particular, when you set this TV up, you can go through a personalization process where you're shown a number of images and you select the ones that you prefer. The TV will then use AI to determine what type of picture you like and give you a picture mode to match that. Now, besides having a play around and confirming that both models give you extensive settings to personalize your visuals, I've left both TVs in their standard mode for my head to heads. So what I wanna do is talk you guys through some of the differences that we've been noticing between these two TVs on a couple of different scenes. So we're gonna start with this one here from John Wick 4. Now, the first thing that I wanna take a look at is the difference in contrast. So if we take a closer look at the C3 to begin with, you can notice just how much contrast there is, especially on the clothing in these darker areas in comparison to the brighter parts of the image, like the sky in the background. But I think one thing that is also quite obvious is the differences in color. And it does look a lot more accurate and almost more lifelike on the Sony A90K in comparison to the C3. I think what's also noticeable is that there's almost a green hue on the C3 in this scene. So just to back up that point about that greeny tint, I've paused another scene here from John Wick and you can see if you look towards the top of the sky on the C3, it does seem to offer a little bit more green in the sky in comparison to the A90K. But one thing that's also noticeable is the C3 does look a little bit more grainy, especially in the sky in comparison again to the A90K. So just to make sure it wasn't the John Wick film in particular that was offering this differences in green levels between the C3 and A90K, I've also paused this scene here from Top Gun Maverick. And I think it's fairly obvious, not only in the sky, but also in the foreground on the floor. And you can see that the C3 does offer a much greener picture than the A90K. 
From our testing in both a brighter space and our darker film studio, the LG C3 is definitely the brighter model, both in SDR and HDR content. The overall picture is brighter when compared with the A90K and the highlights pop off more too. And because of that brightness alone, I was instantly more drawn to the C3. Now both offer near infinite blacks, but because of the brighter highlights on the C3, I found the contrast was ever so slightly better on that model. However, at times the blacks can be a bit crushing and I lost some of the details in the darker scenes and areas of the screen. And this is where the A90K really stepped up, retaining the details better in the shadows. So to really re-emphasize that point about the level of information retained in the shadows in comparison with these two models, if we start by taking a look at the A90K, you can see that there definitely is a level of detail and some information that's retained in the darker areas of the image. Whereas if you look at the C3, it is almost basically completely blacked out. In our darker studio, I found that those darker scenes were more watchable on the A90K, where it retained more of that detail in the shadowy areas, even though the C3 was a brighter picture. But to be fair, actually at times, brighter whites could be a little bit too bright on the C3 for me. And that's where the picture settings would definitely come into play for me to take that down a bit in a darker space. Now the A90K is definitely bright enough in this darker space, but again, if you were to look straight away, you are instantly more drawn to the C3 due to the better brightness. In all honesty, I I think if I were to walk into a store and see all of them lined up, then the C3 would definitely grab me more. But once I took the time to sit down and really watch these TVs, the A90K does give a more natural picture and that does feel a little bit more accurate to me. When it comes to motion, I would say both performed really well and I couldn't really pick apart much of a difference, whether it was sports or action sequences. So having spent a good few weeks with these TVs, I think for anyone looking for the brightest TV or the best option for a bright space, then the C3 might be the way to go. Now also, if you're a fan of the more contrasty, vivid image, then the C3 would definitely tick that box. However, if you're looking for the more accurate picture, I still think the A90K and Sony's processing is a step ahead there. But don't forget, there is a lot of room for picture adjustments with both of these models. And so I do think that you could find a performance that works for you and your space with both the A90K and the C3. So we know how they look, but how do they sound? Well, we do need to lower our expectations a little bit as TV speakers aren't renowned for offering a performance that will blow you away. And that's especially true when it does come to these smaller models. Now, in general, we would recommend using a soundbar if you can. And both of these TVs will work intuitively with a soundbar from the same brand. But of course, if that's not an option for you, then you are relying on the audio performance of the TV speakers. Now, the A90K uses Sony's Acoustic Surface Audio Plus technology, where there are two actuators behind the screen which vibrate and turn the whole screen into a speaker. Now this means that the sound isn't so directional and it matches up with the visuals for a more accurate performance. So we've got two 10 watt actuators in this 48 inch model and one 5 watt center sub for a bit of a boost in the bass. Now this model also offers 3D surround upscaling where it will deliver surround sound virtually. Now in practice, I'm not sure how much that lands, but I do think the overall performance from this TV is pretty good. Now it does a good job of making the sound feel like it's coming from the whole screen and the bass is also pretty decent for TV speakers and it is a fairly room filling sound. The LG C3 offers a 2.2 channel speaker setup with a 40 watt output. Now they also use something called AI Sound Pro where it virtually upmixes into 9.1.2. But again, I am quite skeptical of that, but they are working to not just provide standard sound from their TV speakers. Now, interestingly on the C3 product page, they really push matching it with one of their soundbars. So maybe that's them acknowledging that it's a weaker point for this TV. Now, don't get me wrong, it's not bad. And obviously for a smaller space, it will be fine, but it definitely hasn't blown me away. Now mainly, as it's quite a directional sound, you can really hear that the sound is coming from the speakers. And I do think that there's an, an absence of bass, which leaves the overall performance feeling like it's missing some low end. It's decent enough, especially for a 48 inch model, but it's not quite at the same level as the A90K for sound for me. Okay, on to gaming. Now, both of these TVs are really pushing that they're a great option for gaming, and that's because they are. Now, there are lots of similarities here. Both offer support for ALLM, VRR, and support for 4K 120 Hz, but the C3 has four HDMI 2.1 ports supporting that compared with two on the Sony, and one of those is the eARC, which is a little bit of a bugbear if you want to have a few different consoles and devices connected up. Now, the A90K does offer auto HDR tone mapping, which will optimize HDR settings when you set up your PS5, and that's gonna give you a better picture quality, retaining the details and colors even in high contrast scenes. 
The C3 has some extra support over the A90K, including AMD FreeSync Premium. It's compatible with NVIDIA G-Sync and it supports cloud gaming. Now there is also a new feature called Quick Media Switching VRR, which is great if you need to switch between different inputs and it means you won't get that annoying stuff when changing frame rates. The C3 also has a pretty extensive game dashboard and optimizer, which is handy for making quick changes while you're playing. Now, Sony have introduced a new game menu for its 2023 models, but no word yet on whether that will be backdated for the A90K continuing on this year. There are a lot of different factors that contribute to your overall gaming experience, but some key stats include the response times and input lag, which will be most relevant for those of you guys who like playing fast paced games where your reaction times can really affect your performance. Now, both models do have a 0.1 millisecond response time and both state that they offer a low input lag of under 10 milliseconds. Now, in our testing on four at 120 hertz we found that the a90k gave us an input lag of around about nine milliseconds whereas the lg was sitting slightly lower between five and six milliseconds now there are of course a few different factors that can affect this and to be honest both performed well in my testing but i do know that some of you guys like to really get into the details here so we've tested both these tvs with both a ps5 and an xbox to see how they performed starting with the c3 with the ps5 first then which is automatically recognized through hdmi now during gameplay i felt like the colors were great and where they are a little bit more saturated it did help the game pop off the screen more now i also found that it retained okay levels of details in the shadows not great but also not terrible oh and finally i did test motion blur but personally found that to be a little bit too much for me so i did decide to switch that off okay on to the a90k then which automatically optimized for the ps5 when connected and as mentioned there's no game menu on this model so i had less personalization but it was much quicker to optimize now overall the gameplay was less vibrant than the c3 but i did find that it retained more details in the shadows which is great for spotting enemies in those darker scenes especially on games like cod when testing the A90K with Xbox, it didn't automatically recognize the Xbox as a console. I needed to set the HDMI mode to fix that, and I also needed to go into the console settings and game settings to adjust things manually. Now, personally, I don't think this is too bad as certain games require different settings. So things like I don't want motion blur turned off for all games, for example, but gameplay was pretty much the same as the PS5. Nothing to complain about there, really. With the Xbox, again, it was recognized straight away, but where the game menu was automatic with the PS5, I had to make sure that game optimizer mode in the TV settings was on to gain full access with the Xbox. However, once on, it has a really extensive game menu, which is great. Gameplay was again nice and vivid, and I had the same thoughts about the details in the shadows. Not bad, but could be better. Now, motion was great though, which did make gameplay very enjoyable. Like I said, both TVs are good for gaming, and as both have impressive picture quality, it's an enjoyable experience with both of these models. Now, I did test a wide range of games out and was looking for any major differences, but to be honest, there was no major difference in lag for first-person shooter games, for example, and I didn't experience any noticeable input delay with either. Now, overall, if gaming is your main priority, then the C3 is the more obvious choice with that game menu, the extra ports, and overall more compatibility, especially for Xbox. And if I was picking which would make a better gaming monitor, then that would be my pick. But on the other hand, the A90K is still a solid option for gamers and has a clear compatibility with the PS5 too. Okay, on to the overall experience then. If we start with the operating system, the A90K is a Google TV. And if I'm being honest, I think it's probably the best TV OS that I've tested so far. It's intuitive, everything you need is quick and easy to access, and there aren't too many ads. It does a good job of learning what you watch and recommending content from different apps for you to watch. And I find myself using that recommended for you section quite a bit. You can also have different users if you want to keep things really personal. The C3 uses LG's WebOS 23, which is new for this year. Now I do have to say, I do quite like this as well, and you can have your own profiles too, and I like how it's laid out, but there are quite a few ads and it just feels a little bit messier than the Google TV. Again, this will of course be personal preference, and if you use an Apple TV, then you wouldn't really be using this home screen. Now overall, my experience living with both of these TVs has been really enjoyable. Both are intuitive to use and have in-depth settings for those who want to get into it. 
I said at the start that this is a close call and having lived with these for a few weeks, I still feel like it's hard to pick between these two models. Now, not because there aren't many differences, because I do feel like there is quite a bit differentiating these models, which hopefully I've highlighted to you throughout this review, but because the right TV for you might be different from the right TV for me. Now, a lot of the differences between these two models could be pros or they could be cons, depending on your personal taste, what you plan on using your TV for, and of course, the space that you're planning on putting it in. Generally, if you've got a bright room, plan on using this TV to game a lot, and you're a fan of the more vivid picture, and are maybe considering wall mounting your TV and using a soundbar, then I'd probably recommend the C3. But if your priority is the most accurate picture for movie watching, you want an aesthetic TV to go on top of a TV stand, and you game from time to time on a PS5, then the A90K might be a better choice for you. As I know you guys like to have a winner, the best that I can do is to tell you which model that I would go for. And personally, I think the A90K takes it for me with that better processing and I really do prefer the colours that I got on that model and plus my lounge at home isn't overly bright so the brightness of the A90K will be plenty good enough for my space. But as always with these comparisons I would love to hear which one you guys would go for down in the comments below. Now if you found this video helpful then please be sure to subscribe as we've got lots more content like this coming very soon. Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you all in the next video.